Back in the 1950s, there was a movie that really caught people's attention. It was about these tough motorcycle riders causing trouble in a small town. One famous scene has the leader of the gang being asked what he's rebelling against, and he just says, whatever you've got. This movie showed how young people were pushing back against authority and rules. It's still remembered today for showing that rebellious spirit. As you watch this video, you'll learn some interesting facts about the movie. Share your own memories of it in the comments below. Keep watching for more stories and insights. When the film hit the screens, it caused quite a stir, portraying the rebellious motorcycle gang lifestyle of the era. It captures the clash between the establishment and the counterculture. The enigmatic leader of the Black Rebels Motorcycle Club, played by Marlon Brando, exudes defiance and coolness, epitomized by his black leather jacket and engineer boots. Alongside him, Lee Marvin delivers a compelling performance as his rival. The dynamics between the leader and the townsfolk of Hollister, California, where the story unfolds, are fraught with tension. The motorcycle gang disrupts the tranquility of the small town, leading to clashes and misunderstandings. Despite initial curiosity from some locals, the situation escalates into chaos, reflecting the broader societal tensions of the time. At the heart of the story is the complex relationship between the leader and Kathy, the pretty waitress played by Mary Murphy. Their interaction is charged with unspoken desires and frustrations, highlighting the theme of miscommunication and longing for intimacy. Despite their attraction, their differences ultimately prevent them from finding common ground. The film explores rebellion, the desire for freedom, and the struggle for identity resonating beyond the era it depicts. Brando's performance as the brooding antihero is standout, showcasing his ability to embody characters with depth. However, as the years passed, questions arose about Brando's choice of roles and the effect on his career trajectory. The movie remains a cultural touchstone, influencing generations of viewers with its portrayal of youthful rebellion and defiance. Its enduring appeal lies in its exploration of timeless themes and its depiction of characters grappling with societal expectations and personal desires. In conclusion, this drama stands as a compelling narrative that continues to captivate audiences with its exploration of rebellion, desire, and the quest for identity. Its impact as a cultural icon is cemented by its relevance and the memorable performances of its cast, making it a must-watch for cinephiles of all ages. In another movie, there's a party scene where J.C. Flippin, who's in a wheelchair because he lost his leg to diabetes, shows up briefly. Even though he passed away not long after, his appearance at the party is delightful. In a different movie, there's a scene at the beginning where a biker almost crashes into the camera, but swerves at the last moment. These little moments behind the scenes make the movies more interesting. In a famous scene halfway through the movie, the group gathers at a bar, and something memorable happens as one person goes for a high five with another, possibly the first time it happened in a movie. There was some disagreement when Marlon Brando, who's known for his roles in many films like The Godfather, didn't initially like the idea of Burt Reynolds playing Santino Corleone in that big movie. It's interesting to note that Brando became really famous after playing Stanley Kowalski in A Streetcar Named Desire, a part he almost didn't get because they thought he was too old. But then he got the role, and it made him super famous practically overnight. Throughout his career, he made significant contributions to the world of film. In 1974, he earned his final nomination for Best Actor for a controversial movie. His refusal of an award created a rare situation in Hollywood. A renowned director wanted him for a role in a biographical film, but he declined. Later, they collaborated on another project. He developed a strong connection with a Pacific island while filming a classic movie. Enchanted by its beauty, he purchased the island and had ambitious plans for it. His career was marked by bold decisions and memorable performances, leaving a lasting impression on the movie industry. His legacy continues to shape Hollywood's narrative today. In the film, he wrote his own Triumph 6T Thunderbird, registration 63 1632. The movie also features Robert Keith, who married the successful theater guild actress Peg and Twistle. And Twistle gained posthumous fame after her tragic suicide. Lee Marvin's motorcycle gang in the movie is called the Beatles. This scene is believed to have influenced the name of the 1960s rock band. It's even featured at the beginning of the Beatles anthology. The Wild One, released in 1953, enjoyed a significant run in the UK, with screenings at various venues across the country. Despite initial concerns about its content, the film found its way to audiences in different regions, including Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland. Even in London's West End, it received attention from film clubs, further expanding its reach. 
Marlon Brando, a central figure in the film, had a personal connection to his friend Wally Cox, whose ashes he held onto for years. Eventually, both Brando's and Cox's ashes were scattered together in Death Valley, California. Brando's involvement in his son Christian Brando's legal troubles also made headlines, with the actor using his assets to secure bail. His commitment to family and his career left a lasting mark on Hollywood history. In the world of movies, the wild one holds a special spot. Marlon Brando, one of the main actors, had a great career. He was considered for different roles like Dr. Martin Dysart in Equus. Even though he didn't get that part, he made a big impact on the movie scene. Another interesting story is about Alvy Moore, who met his future wife while studying at the Pasadena Playhouse. They both had similar last names, Moore and Mower, so they shared a mailbox. Brando was also in Scary Movie 2, but only for a short time. Despite not being in good health during filming, the scene he was in hasn't been released yet, showing how influential he was in movies. In a famous movie with well-known motorcycle logos, Johnson Motors initially didn't like being connected with the group led by Marlon Brando, known as the Black Rebels. Surprisingly, this negative connection turned out to be really good for the company. The controversy brought a lot of attention to their brand and the rebellious side of motorcycle culture. Interestingly, when they asked Marlon Brando to be in another movie called Dr. Zhivago, he didn't respond. Because of that, James Mason got the role instead. It makes you wonder what could have happened if Brando had said yes. At the same time, the president of the San Francisco Hells Angels, Frank Sadelec, saw a chance during the making of the movie. He got hold of Lee Marvin's shirt from the film, making it a prized possession in the motorcycle community. These stories show how Hollywood and real-life motorcycle culture are connected, blurring the lines between fiction and real life. It shows how movies can have a big effect on popular culture, going beyond just entertainment to influence trends and subcultures. The Wild One still has an impact, leaving a lasting impression on both the entertainment world and the motorcycle scene. In the film, two of the cyclists in Brando's gang are portrayed by Alvy Moore and Jerry Paris, known for their roles in popular television series. Marlon Brando, after his Academy Award nomination for Best Actor in A Streetcar Named Desire, famously joked about sending a cab driver in his place to pick up the Oscar. Brando's Mulholland Drive Home once shared a driveway with his co-star Jack Nicholson from the Missouri Breaks, who later bought the property from Brando's estate. The connection between Brando and Nicholson extended beyond the screen to their real estate dealings.